rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. All right, come on in. The Lord bless you. Grace and peace. Greet us where you meet us. Come on. Hallelujah. I see you coming in. Come on. Drop into the comments. Let me know that you can hear as well as see. And sing along with me. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, you say. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hey, blessings, Sheila. So shall I be saved from my end of the Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I know the Lord reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord God reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, the Lord, he reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord God reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. You say the Lord, he reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord God reigneth and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord God reigneth and blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Be exalted. Come on, come on. I see you, Sister Francine. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Lift him up, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever. Come on, lift him up. He is worthy of glory. He is worthy of honor. Make sure that you like, share, and invite someone else to this Thursday night Bible study. Time of teaching. Time of rejoicing and giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Come on. How many of you know? Lord of your life. Yes. He is Lord over my life. He is Lord over my circumstance. He rules. He reigns. He's supreme. He is sovereign. My God, I don't have to worry. I'm going to trust him. Ah, come on. Oh, he is Lord over my life. 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 Is he Lord Come 
alone. Because there's only one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one name that we can call on, one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, you call him Yeshua. My God, he is the son. He is the son of God. My Lord, he is the Messiah. He is the savior. He is the deliverer. He is the healer. He is the way maker. He is the way through, the way over, for he is the door. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Come on. Have you made him Lord over your life? Come on, let's declare and decree. He is Lord over my life. Lord over my life. He is Lord over my life. Lord over my life. He is Lord over your life. Lord over your life. Is he Lord over your life? Lord over your life. Is he Lord over your circumstance? Lord over your finance? Lord over your house? Lord over your spouse? Is he Lord over your children? Lord over the family tree? Lord over what pertains to me? Yes, come on. There's only one Lord. My God, there's only one God who is the head of our life. He is the almighty God. He rules, he reigns, he is sovereign over everything. Come on. If you know that Jesus Christ is Lord, if you know that he is the son of God, God in the flesh, right there in the comments, declare and decree that there is no other God like him. My God, yes. There's only one, one faith, one baptism, one, my God, the Lord our God is one Lord, Jesus, hallelujah, come on, let's call upon the name of the Lord, hallelujah, 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 my God, my God, my God, listen, that's how you do a Thursday night teaching, uh, my Lord, that's Thursday night teaching. That's a little bit of dynamite. That's how we want to start tonight with some dynamite, giving him praise, giving him glory, giving him honor because he has done marvelous things. Anybody recognize the Lord has done marvelous things whereof you are glad. If you are glad that the Lord has done marvelous things, send up some hearts, drop something into the comments to be your testimony that he is great and greatly to be praised. Well, listen, we're here tonight and we greet you in the name of the Lord. So glad to be here uh, with you, enjoying uh, the presence of the Lord, enjoying those of you that are coming in, those of you that are viewing in the replay. Listen, join in, drop in a comment. Put something as a notification to say, I was there and I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, if you can't get there physically, you can join in with us spiritually. Listen, this is, yes, the day that the Lord has made. Did you rejoice? Were you glad in it? Listen, there have been some things that tried to steal your joy, but ain't no rock. Gonna cry in my place. I lift my voice and glorify his holy name. I see you, Sister Pharrell. Ain't no rock. Gonna cry in my place. I lift my voice and glorify his holy name. He's worthy of praise. His holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. He's worthy, let's praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Someone said, ain't no tree gonna wave his branches. I lift my hands to glorify his holy name. I said, ain't no tree gonna wave his branches. I lift my hands to glorify his holy name. He's worthy, let's praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. He's worthy, let's praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Ain't no bird, come on. Ain't no bird. Gonna sing in my place. I lift my voice to glorify his holy name. I said, ain't no bird 
gonna sing in my place. I lift my voice and glorify his holy name. He's worthy, let's praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Are you alive? He's worthy of praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. I lift my hands and glorify his holy name. I'll testify and glorify his holy name. Amen. The Lord is holy and therefore he deserves all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Amen. And it's our delight to come and join together and lift up the name of the Lord. Listen, for it is the name of the Lord that is a strong tower. It's a high tower that the righteous run into and they are saved. You're looking for a place of safety, you've got to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're looking for a place of safety, you got to dwell under the shadow, my God, of the Almighty, under his wings. Yes, according to the psalmist, he said, listen, I'm good. that's where I want to dwell. I want to abide in the sanctuary, in the presence of the Lord, because where the presence of the Lord is, listen, there is fullness of joy at his right hand. There are pleasures evermore. And so that's the safest place in all the world to be in the presence of the Lord and to know that not only do I know him, but he knows me. How do you know that he knows you? Because your name has been recorded in the book of life because I have believed on the Lord Jesus. Yes, indeed. Like the scripture says, I've confessed Jesus as Lord. And listen, not just with my mouth, but my life is a living testimony, walking in obedience. And even when I stumble, when I fall, he says that the righteous fall a seven times, but the Lord picks them up. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Anybody glad that Jesus has lifted you? Yes, from sinking sands, he lifted me. Listen, from shades of light and plain of light. Oh, my God, what we thank the Lord for what he has done, what he's done for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell all that he has done. And listen, you can't do it either because the truth of the matter is that if we had a thousand tongues, how many would use each and every one to bless his name? And we'd spend all of our lifetime just stopping to think if we really start to count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. All you have to do is begin to enumerate, think about. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for me. My very soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Anybody thinking of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, there ought to be something stirring on the inside. There ought to be something welling up on the inside, bubbling up. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my my soul is springing, is shouting, since Jesus made me whole. Some folks, uh, uh, what? Some folks can't, no. Some folks can't live, no. Some folks will live. Some folks can't, no, no. But I can't keep it quiet. It's B I B I. It's B I B B L I N G bubbling in my soul. Someone sing that song. Come on. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in my soul. It's singing. It's shouting. Since Jesus made me whole, some folks don't understand it, but I can keep it quiet. It's B I B B L I N G bubbling in my soul. Is he bubbling in your soul? The goodness of the Lord bubbling up in you. There there is, as it were, a well of living water springing up on the inside. He said that's what he would be in us. Amen. A well of living water. I see you, Sister Bridget. Blessings to you. Thank you for joining. Good evening. Hey, Sister Molly Miller, blessings to you. So good to have each of you joining us tonight. Yes. Anybody know that he's bubbling on the inside? My God, can't keep it quiet. Some folks don't understand it, but you can't keep it quiet. You got to testify. You got to tell of the goodness of the Lord and what he has done. You got to tell somebody how good he's been. 
Oh, yes, you've got to testify and you've got a testimony. When you look back over my life, mm -hmm, and I think things all over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I have a testimony. Oh, when I look back over my life, Mm hmm And I think things all over. I can truly say he's brought me all the way. I have a testimony. Anybody have a testimony? Anybody have a testimony? Well, if you've got a testimony, make sure that you join me tomorrow behind closed doors prayer ministry at 7 a.m. Tomorrow is going to be Fellowship Friday, and there's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to share your testimony, share your favorite scripture. Remember, we're going to do scripture showers. Yes, you know, scripture showers. That's when one of your many favorite scriptures that you would like to share. So you'll have an opportunity to join me live or just type it into the chat. All right, you'll be able to type into the chat, what is your favorite scripture? And listen, if it resonates with us, we're going to grab that favorite scripture and just expound on it just in that moment so that there will be showers of blessings that will fall upon all of those in attendance tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Behind Closed Doors Prayer Ministry. I'll be the special guest host tomorrow, Mother Sims Gates. We are praying for her uh, as she recovers from a procedure on her eyes, but I'm sure she's going to be somewhere listening on the live to all that will transpire tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Listen, Behind Closed Doors Prayer Ministries at 7 a.m. as we will be the special guest host uh, next, uh, tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to say next week. No, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Make sure you set your clocks for 6.45 a.m. so that at 7 a.m. you can join us live. Yes, live and direct behind closed doors. Prayer ministry as we are going to be sharing and you will have an opportunity to share as well. Amen. I see you, Sister uh, Marie Revis. Bless your life. Bless your family. Bless all that pertains to you. And we're just so glad to have each of you joining us this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus. As we gather in your name, we know that you are present because you dwell in the midst of those who praise you. Yes, those who praise you. You dwelled in the midst of the praise of your children, Israel. And we believe, Father, that every time we gather in your name, that you're going to be in the midst of us. You've carried us over the highways and the byways. You've taken us from the Southlands and brought us back home. You took us to the Northlands and you brought us back home. And so, Father, we thank you for your goodness. You provided everything that we need. There wasn't anything lacking, anything wanting, anything in distress. We thank you for being our our shield and our buckler. Thank you for protecting us from danger, seen and unseen, on the roadway, on the highway. My God, we thank you driving through the night in the storms and the rain. You kept the vehicle on the road. You kept us in our lane and you kept everybody in their proper perspective. And we saw accidents. We saw incidents. We even saw car, truck fires. But Lord, we thank you and we believe you that there was no death. And we thank you, Lord, for healing. We thank you for those uh, first responders that came to the aid of those who were in need. We thank you for you are good and your mercies endure forever. We thank you, Father, for these that have gathered and whatsoever they have asked in your name. Uh, what Jesus said, Father, that if we ask anything in his name, that you may give it to us. And so we believe you, Father, that as we ask in fame, that which is in alignment to your will, that you, O oh, Father, would be pleased to magnify yourself and to grant the petition, the request that we've made known unto you. So we thank you for those, Father, that are healed. We thank you, Father, for those that are delivered. We thank you, Father, for those that are being set free. We thank you for those that are being saved and rescued. We thank you, Father, for those, O oh Lord, that are finding out that you are the love of their life, that you, O oh Lord, are the lover of their soul. We thank you, Father, for those who were in distress, they were in dire need, they were in dark 
darkness, but you've turned the light on. You've made them to know that with love and kindness you have drawn them. And so, Father, we bless you. We give you the glory, and we give you the honor, and we give you the praise for answered prayers in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for answered prayers in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We thank you for answered prayers in the name of Jesus. We thank you for answered prayers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father, that whatever has been asked by faith, mm, my Lord, you said without faith it's impossible to please you. And those, oh Father, that, that come to you, they must first believe that you are are, mm, and that you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And so, Father, we thank you even now in the name of Jesus. There have been those that you have sought after. There are those, O oh Lord, that you've chased down with your love and your kindness to draw them unto you. And we believe you even now, Father, within our family, within our friends, our loved ones, even our foes, Father, that as the light of your glory shine through us through the good works that are done, that they will be drawn unto you in the name of Jesus. Draw them unto you. Deliver them from themselves. Deliver them from the plans of the enemy. Deliver them from the strategies and the schemes and the plots and the entrapment in the name of Jesus. Destroy the yokes. Mm. We thank you for destroying the yokes in the name of Jesus and setting the captives free. And as we will obey your word to go into all the world to declare your goodness, to carry this good news, the gospel, this report that you've given unto us that we are to give to them. Let faith come alive in them. Let their ears be unstopped. Let their eyes, O oh Lord, be open and cause their mouths to open and loose their tongues that they might declare Jesus Lord to the saving of their souls. We thank you for salvation. My God, we thank you for salvation of our loved ones. We thank you for salvation of our friends. We thank you for salvation of our foes. In the name of Jesus, save and deliver as only you can for there is no other Savior. There is no other God. There is no one else. Mm. You are the only one, Father. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus. Mm. And do in us that which would make us better. Do in us, my God, that which only you can do. We recognize, O oh Lord, that we need a work mm, to be darabashi, rembando, rabakasha. By God, we need a work done in us. And so we sing, Spirit of, yes, the living God. Blessing to your mother Riley, for fresh. On me. Come on, you need him to do something in you. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on me. Right there where you are. Come on, let's join in. Spirit of the living God. name, yes, Lord, break me, melt me, mold me, and fill me, spirit of the living God, fall for
our prayer tonight, Father. Mm. Do it in us for your glory. Deliver us from ourselves. We don't want to be the same as we were yesterday, last week, last month, even last year. In the name of Jesus, we submit and yield unto you that you would have your way in us, that you would have your way through us. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Fall afresh on me. Yes, Lord. Come on, ask him. Break the attitude. Break the disposition. Break everything that's not like you, Father. Anything that would be a hindrance. Anything that would stop and block us. Anything that would be a stumbling block. Father, hmm. Have your way, Spirit of mm, the Living God. Full fresh on me, yes. Holy Spirit, fill this room right there where they are. Shekinah glory, sweet perfume. We need your presence. We need you. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Come on, ask him. Talk to him. Holy Spirit, It might be the nursing home, it might be a prison room, it might be wherever, hospital room. You are the Shekinah glory and the fragrance of the presence of the Lord. We need your presence right there in our home. We need you. Holy Spirit, fill this room, our car, wherever we are. We need your presence. Just type in Holy Spirit, fill this room. Come on. Yes. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Let's invite the Spirit of the Lord, uh, the glory of God to fill where we are. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and abide within us. Rest upon. Nothing with 
without the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Come on. Come with heaven's power. Let the rains descend. Times of sweet refreshing. Jesus, fill my heart. Heal my heart. Fill my heart. Heal my heart. Fill my heart again. Right there where you are, right there where you are. We need you. Do you need him? Come on, come on. Yes. We need you. Yes, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Yes, 
Lord. Mm. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come on. Come flood this place and fill our atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Mm. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. My God, come and flood this place and fill the atmosphere, the atmosphere of our homes, the atmosphere of our community, the atmosphere of our, our city, our county. My God, fill the earth is filled with your glory. Mm, let your glory be manifest. Let your presence be manifest in a mighty, magnanimous way, Father. In the name of Jesus, your presence, mm, your presence will bring peace. Your presence will, will mute and squelch the violence. Your presence will bring deliverance. Your presence will bring joy. Those who have been sad, those who have been mad, it'll change their continents. My God, do it for your glory. Let your presence, mm, your presence fill our homes, fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill us. My God, we don't want to be the same. Mm, but in your presence, we are changed. In your presence, we are transformed. Oh, your presence, Lord. Yes, come on, take a little time and worship him. Mm, your presence, Lord. Mm, your presence, Lord. Mm, your presence. Father, as this sound goes across the internet, as it goes into homes, live and in the replay. Let your presence mm, fill the atmosphere. Holy Spirit, move and super rule in the name of Jesus. In that hospital, in that convalescent home, in that rehabilitation place, in that space where they are, mm, where there is trouble. My God, show yourself in the name of Jesus. We welcome you. Mm, yes. <laughs> mm. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your Let us become more aware of your presence, Father. Let us see you moving in our daily lives. Manifest your presence. Manifest your glory. Manifest your word in the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes. Help us to become more aware that you're with us everywhere we go, everywhere we be. Jesus, show up. My God, show up. Mm. Uh, yes, Lord. Mm. Jesus, oh, we worship you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Come on, just a little while longer. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is to me, join me, come on.
my God, hallelujah. Thank God for the comforter. Thank God for the helper. Thank God for the one that aids and abides with us forever. All my days on earth I will wait. The moment that I see you face to face. And nothing in this world will satisfy. Because Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Nothing in this world will satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Nothing in this world Nothing in this world can satisfy, but Jesus is the cup that won't run dry. Mm. Nothing in this world, Father, nothing in this world can quite satisfy the thirsting and the longing of my soul. There's an emptiness, there's a void in man, but Jesus, mm. Yeshua, my God, you are the cup that won't run dry. Fill us up, because mm, your presence is what we desire. Your presence in our homes. Fill us up to overflowing. Mm, fill us up to overflowing. To there's no emptiness, there's no longing, there is no depression. My God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Mm. What is it that you need? Mm. What is it that you're thirsty, that you're hungry for? What is it that your soul is thirsty and hungry for? Jesus is. Your presence is heaven to me. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Father, we thank you. We thank you for dwelling in the midst of us. We thank you that right now, here as well as there, we can sense your presence. We thank you for peace that passes all understanding. Even now, whatever trouble of the day has come, we thank you that in your presence, there is this confidence and reassurance that all is well. And we thank you, Father, that all is well in the name of Jesus. All is well. Mm, mm. We give you glory. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, your presence, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your presence, Lord. Amen. There's something about the presence of the Lord. There's something about uh, experiencing uh, the presence of the Lord and just allowing time to just dwell in his presence. Sometimes we're ready to rush right in, but no, 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 no. Sometimes we just need to wait in the presence of the Lord and allow him to minister to the deepest needs that we have. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for as we ought to, but as we worship him, mm -hmm, as, we, as we delight ourselves in him, he knows the desires of our heart. He knows exactly what we need. He touches, he handles, he ministers the type of strength to our inner man. Oh, the outward man sometimes can fool us. Yeah, because sometimes there's a pain over here and, and, and there's an ache over there and there's something going on right there. Right now, there's someone that's experiencing this. But you know what? As we worship, as we welcome the Holy Spirit, as we became more aware of his presence, there was a peace, peace, wonderful peace flowing down from the Father above. It swept over your spirit. Yes, it did. Yes, the peace of God has swept over over your spirit and the things that were uh, an agony, the things you were wrestling with, the things that you were, were, were contemplating that was, you know, you just gave so much mental energy to it. You're able to roll those things on the Lord. You're able to see that he is greater. He is bigger. He is awesome. He's able to handle it. And in his presence, all those things just dissipated because we understood that the Lord has already, and what we're looking for is the manifestation of what he has already determined. And so if you believe it, he says, when you pray, if you believe that you received it, you shall have it. Amen. Amen. Listen, whatever it is, God's got it. Whatever it is that you need, he knows and so that's why he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all those things that others are, are, are just stressed out over. They don't know whether they're going or coming. They're looking, how am I going to eat? What, what am I going to wear? What, what am I going to have? Where am I going to? Listen, all of those things, he said, I got you. I got you covered. I got you covered. Rest in the Lord. Don't distress. Don't be stressed out. And don't be distressed by, but rest in him. Rest in him. Rest in him means that, listen, Lord, I trust you. I'm not going to try to wrestle with this thing. I take you at your word. Anybody know that you can take him at his word, that his promises, every word, every promise he gives is yea and amen. If he has promised it, if he has spoken it, it shall come to pass. It shall. Amen. It shall come to pass. It will. It will happen. Just wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait on him and be of good courage. Don't be discouraged. No, no. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen, fortify, undergird, be the underpinning of. He'll strengthen your heart. Amen. Amen. Pray that you're encouraged uh, in the Lord. Amen. Be encouraged in the Lord. Be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Listen, for the last few weeks, we've been dealing with church. We've been dealing with uh, government. We've been dealing with the church and we've been dealing with government. We've been looking at some things pertaining to the church. Its structure is organization, right? Or the organism. When we talk about the church, we talk about the body of Christ, right? And the body of Christ is governed by the word of God. Now, the organisms, as we talked about last week, the organizations are 
are governed by what? They're governed by uh, they're governed by constitution and bylaws, right? That that's that's that organization that's been set up under that state to be recognized, uh, uh, to be uh, um, administered by those officers. But when it comes to the body of Christ, God has His own governmental structure. We shared with you a few facts. One that God has established government in his house, meaning the church of the living God. It is the church that he has purchased, the church of God that he has purchased with his own blood. That means the blood of Jesus Christ has paid the ransom, paid the price so that those uh, who've been called out, right, and we call that the church, the assembly, the ecclesia, right, that's been called out from darkness, that's been called out from sin, that's been called out from uh, a depraved living and a depraved life, to come into a place, uh, he says, he's blessed us with everything that pertains to life and godliness. So God has established government. That means how his house, how his body is to be governed. Uh, that means directed. That means those who rule or stand as examples to feed and to lead, to guide and to encourage, to nurture, right? He says, so God in his word has set up, has established government in his house. So the, the church, as we gather as the body of Christ, is not just uh, without uh, a structure. It's not uh, without some form, right? It's, it's not just a free willy, free nilly, everybody just do whatever they want to do, uh, and, and that's it. It's, it's not that way, right? And and secondly, we looked at that, that God has a plan and pattern for government in his house. God has, God has. I'll say this again. God has a plan and pattern. Yes, he's already structured and laid it out and he's laid and presented the pattern of what it's to look like. Now, we understand patterns because if you rec if you remember with Moses, God showed him the things, the pattern of things in the heavens, right? And when they were structuring the tabernacle, when they were doing those things, they had to do it according to what? pattern. And even when it came down to the garments that were for beauty and glory, a lot of times we see the garments that are worn, worn by uh, uh, those who are who serve as priests that serve in the house of God or uh, amongst the body. We see them in regalia and they're, they're laid out and they're decked out. And we say, oh my goodness, look at what they're putting on and, and all these things. They look princely and they've got the, the pointed hats, the mitre, and they've got the cope and they They've got the crozier and they're wearing this and all of those, all that regalia is for beauty and glory. And there's a pattern of that, a pattern of that, a pattern, hear me now, there's a pattern of that for those who don't think that, that there's a pattern for it. There is a pattern for it in the Old Testament. And he says, these are how their breeches are to be. These are the tunic. This is how they're supposed to wear this. This is what they're going to put onto their head. This is what's going to be on the shoulders. This is the breastplate that's going to be worn and how many Jews and the order of the Jews. And so when they come before me, that they represent the, the, the 12 tribes and on the show. Listen, all of these things are laid out in scripture. So understand that there is, that God has set up one, he has established government in his house. His house doesn't just run health to skeleton. No, everything is done decently and in order. And he has those who keep the order or set the order because who handles disputes? Who handles issues and matters that come up? In the body. Well, God has set some in the body, right? He has set some. When he ascended up on high, the scripture says, and led captivity captive, what he did is he gave gifts unto men. You'll find that over in Ephesians chapter, what? Yes, exactly, chapter 6. You'll see it there. Chapter 4, rather. Chapter 4, verses 11, 12, 13. You'll see that there where he has set in his house the structure. He says, I've given some what? I've given some uh, apostles and, and some prophets, some evangelists and pastors and teachers, and then he delivered exactly how they ought to function, how they ought to serve, but they're all serving as his gifts to us, his body, right? 
Amen. Amen. So God has a plan as well as a pattern for government in his house. Now, remember, it is God's house. It is God's church. It's what he has purchased, what he has established. All right. We may have our own organizations and that's nice. But when it comes to the organism, the head of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll say it again for those in the back row who may not have heard it the first time. So let me say that the head Okay, let me get a little closer and put it. The head of the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, the called out ones, the assembly of the righteous, right? The head of the church is Jesus Christ. The church is his body made up of many members of which we who have been born again, we who are believers walking in the way we are. Amen. From the youngest to the oldest. No matter how long, we're all brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And Jesus Christ is the head. That means he is the head. That means everything in the head, right? He is the brains behind it, okay? He is the hearing one, the speaking one, the seeing one. He is the one that speaks. He is the one that directs. He is the one that calls the shots. He is the one that's sovereign. He is the one that raises up one, puts down. He is the one. Now, that is the church being the called out one, being the body, right? That he is called together. And then you have the organization. That's a different structure. Yes, that's a different structure. The organization is not the organism necessarily. I'll say that again, because sometimes we get the conflicted and confused about the organization, our denominations and all of those things that we put together and we structure under the state. And whether it's a local, whether it's state, whether it's regional, whether it's national, whether it's international, all that is nice. But that is not necessarily the church because it's not necessarily according to the pattern, because there are bylaws and sometimes those bylaws are in conflict with the Bible. <laughs> okay, I'll say that again. Sometimes, and even in our best efforts to be able to, and I can tell you because we had to pull together bylaws for our organization, and we 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 strained very difficult. Listen, you could take the whole Bible and just say, okay, this is it. And that's nice, right? But when you set up the Organization is not the same thing as the organism because the head of the church is Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord. The head of that organization will be whoever the officers are, okay, whoever the officers are that are responsible with the fiduciary responsibility to govern it. And then those who say, yes, I will be a member in that organization. They can choose to be a member in good standings if they abide by the organization structure. Well, those who come into the organism must come through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be in the Lord Jesus Christ and not necessarily a part of the organization. Yes. All right. I, I put it out there. And those who have a difference of opinion, you can write me, email me, text me, call me, all those good things. Drop it into the comments and we can debate about that if necessary. But the truth of the matter is that those who are in the body of Christ, walking in the body of Christ, living in the body, are walking in obedience to God's word may not always be necessarily a part of the organization. All right. So I just need to put that out there so that we can, we can kind of clear the air with that. God has a plan and a pattern, a plan and a pattern for government in his house, just like you have in your house, right? You have in your house, a plan and a pattern. And it's going to be according to how you desire. He said, listen, if men being evil know how to do good gift, give good gifts to their children, how much our Heavenly Father? He says that even the type of disciplines that are done by men in the flesh, he says, listen, he disciplines those who he loves be times, right? And so if we think that sometimes the things that we go through with our natural parents is a lot, what happens when we go through the things as our Heavenly Father has purposed and planned for us. 
All right. So there were four basic facts concerning church government that we we're touching on that we've been going through over the last weeks. And um, these are they. Right. So God has established government in his house, the church. God has a plan and pattern for government in his house. So the world. Hear me clearly. So the world does not set the pattern for the church. The world system does not dictate how the church, meaning the body of Christ, is to function. Now, the world may dictate how the organization functions. Now, someone asked me, well, brother, why would you say that? You're about to cause a problem. Not causing a problem. Anyone that understands a 501c3 to be recognized by the government, right? If you're going to be recognized, and it's, that's for any non for profit, but if there's a religious institution that wants to be recognized by the government, they say in order to meet their criteria, you've got to meet this, 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 and this, and this for them to recognize you and grant you what they have. And that also puts certain restrictions on things of what you can as well as what you can do. All right. So th that's just a little bit of that. But when it, and, and so it is in the organism, there are things that we can and cannot do. So we think that the world has its structure. God word has its structure. OK, so God has a plan and a pattern that we are to obey and that we are to follow. There's a plan and a pattern for government in God's house. Somebody just say, yeah, God's got a plan and a pattern. Just type that in there. God's got a plan and a pattern. Hey, Lady Tracy Hopkins, blessing to you. I don't know if you're still in the room. It's good to see you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Good to see you this evening. Please give Archbishop Fowle love and warm regards. Hey, Sister Sheila, I see you in the room. Blessings to you as well. Mother L.C. Mason, I see you. Good evening to you as well. Amen. Amen. And so um, those are the first two. As we go to these next ones, we understand that God identifies the rules. It should be rulers of the rulers in his house as elders. All right. The rulers, that's with an R. Let's put that in there. All right. God identifies the rulers in his house as elders. The rulers in his house as elders. Now, we have different structures and hierarchy. That, are, But at the end of the day, if we were to go back to the Bible basics, we would see elders, presbyter, uh, uh, overseer, bishop. All of those terms are used synonymously in the scripture for the same person who functions in different roles. All right. In different roles, you'll see where Paul speaks to Timothy about uh, the office of a bishop, those who desire the office of a bishop. Then he speaks over to uh, uh, Titus and he says the elders. Right. He said, I left you there in Crete so you could set in order the things that were needed. And he says, what of elders that you find? And then he uses the term either overseer or bishop uh, that's there. So uh, uh, for a bishop must be blameless. Right. So he puts those things in proper per Spectre. All right. So God identifies even um, I'm sorry, even in um, in Acts chapter 20, when Paul was now on his way back through Jerusalem, he was on his way actually to Rome and he called together the elders. Right. He called together the elders. And, and around 2028, 20 he says uh, um, that the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. He again talking about the elders and talking about their function as Episcopals to look out over the flock of God, right? That the Holy Spirit had made them overseers of. He says, feed the flock of God that the, the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, one who looks out upon, right? Looks after. And who was he speaking to? The elders. So in the Bible, the plan, thank you, Sister Bridge, I see you. God's got a plan in pattern uh, um, that we understand that the Bible has a structure, but again, organizations have its structures. Now, because an organization has different structures, uh, it serves 
its purpose or its function or its goal that it determines as an organization. So we're not going to split hairs about the organizational structure uh, to benefit itself or what its purpose is or what its goal is. But when we talk about the church of the living God, when we talk about the Bible structure and his government and his plan and how God identifies those who are rulers or leaders who stand before to feed, to nurture, to lead his flock, his house as as under shepherds. He says in his house, he identifies them as elders. And we're going to look at that momentarily. All right. Identifies them as elders. And then the fourth of the basics, this is the, just four basic facts concerning church government as it relates to scripture, as it relates to God's plan for those in his house. God determines the kind of individuals that are to be rulers in his house. Again, that's the distinction between the organism being the body of Christ and the organization being that structure that men set up that they use and create to serve its functions to further its goals or ideas uh, or its mission right and some are in alignment with what the word of God says and some are not in alignment with what the word of God says but that's their doings right that's their doings Um, but when it relates to the body of Christ when it talks about church government church there not the organization but the organism the called out ones the ecclesia according to scripture, God determines the kind of individuals, the individuals that are to be rulers or leaders in his house. He's got the right to determine. All right. He's got the right to determine. So let's let's go back and review uh, a few things that um, that we saw here. We talked about uh, elders. Let's see. And we're just going to highlight a few of these. I don't think we're going to go through all of them. All right. But we're going to pick up from fact number two. Fact number two. In fact, number two says that God has a plan. Right. And pattern for government in his house. All right. God has a plan and and has a, a pattern for government in his house. Right. So the if the book of Acts and the rest of the New Testament does not. Uh, represent God's plan, then God has not provided plan. It, this is simply inconceivable. When God cared so much about the pattern relative to the shadow, meaning the, the tabernacle of Moses, etc., how could he be less interested in the real or that which the shadow pointed to, meaning the church? So there's another lesson on that when we look at patterns and we look at the plan. Three, God identifies the rulers in his house as elders. Let's look at Timothy here. He says, let the elders who rule well be worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. All right. Now, listen, there are other forms of government that God could have chosen. Remember, we talked about that about two weeks ago. There are some other forms of government that God could have chosen chosen, but we will see that there, these are not necessarily the ones that he has chosen, but these are uh, uh, types of government that we might see in the organization. All right. In the organization, one is the dictator, uh, dictatorship or one man rule. All right. This is a very simple form of government. Decisions can be made very quickly. But since it is built on one person, the local church will only be as strong as that person is strong. So it depends on the strength of that person, the abilities of that person, the character of that person, the charisma of that person. Everything is levied on that person, that one man rule. Since no leader is perfect, mm -hmm, every church needs a system of checks and balances to ensure that it stays on track. A second one is called democracy or ruled by People ruled by people. All right. So listen, 
And the growing church, new people always outnumber those who have been Christians for a long time. Democracy ends up being a rule by the immature when you have a large following of new converts who are neophytes or young. They don't quite understand the things of God, and they feel that they have a right to rule and to govern, to dictate, right, how things go, all right? And since they will always have a swing vote, meaning that you, you've got them, uh, they feel one way, and those who are more mature, who've been uh, walking uh, in obedience to the Word of God, uh, perhaps a little longer, they're going to pull one way, and then you've got this group that says, no, well, we outnumber, we outrule, we've outvoted, so therefore it's got to go this way. It says this would never work in the natural family, and it will not work in the local church. Then you've got central control or external control. This is government that comes from outside the local church. While the local congregation may have uh, some latitude, okay, the primary decisions are in the hands of those who are not part of the local scene. All right. This can hinder a local church in fully implementing its unique vision and tailoring its program to the unique nature of its city or community. This does not mean that local churches that are in their infant stages do not need some apostolic input. However, once the local leadership has officially been put into place, that local leadership team must become the local church authority. All right. And you'll see that. That sometimes in, in organizations or uh, denomination, uh, denominations, uh, uh, denominations, yes, that 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 set up a central control uh, uh, away from or outside of that local fellowship or of that local community where um, where where they are speaking to and telling how things should go, but they they they're not on they're not on the ground, they're not uh, uh, there to understand the impact uh, of what's needed in the community. So decisions are made at a distance and may not always be congruent with the needs of the current uh, location or community because what might work in your city may not work in mine. What works in your community may not work in mine. What works over in Dallas may not work over here in Orangeburg. OK, so 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 there is if there is to be uh, uh, that type of uh, government, then that needs to, again, Set local persons who can stop and 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 do the demographics, do uh, the perceived needs uh, investigation or research or survey of that community to know what the needs are and how to best meet it and implement a plan that would be uh, a, a pattern of, of of what the scripture would say. All right, here's another one. This is a very popular one, and uh, and sometimes <laughs> it's popular, but can also be very problematic. OK, deacon board or council or ruled by an elected board, ruled by an elected board or deacon board. Now, I know I'm going to get in trouble, perhaps with some of my brother deacons uh, who may exert certain authority uh, beyond um, a pastor to control and dictate how things are done. But when you go back to the book of Acts, chapter six, and, and we, pat, we kind of pattern um, how deacons function according to Acts chapter six. Now, y'all can stop me anywhere in here, especially those that are aware of, of how the scripture, uh, how, how we look at the diaconate, right? When we talk about the servers, when we talk about the deacons uh, who serve in a fiduciary responsibility uh, and serve how uh, uh, in delegated authority, the deacons uh, board was was that of a delegated uh, responsibility. In other words, they were delegated under leadership to be able to function along with, not to superimpose, not to rule and govern, but to function under uh, a, a, a um, delegated authority. All right. So the deacon board. Now, this form of government is where members of, quote unquote, the board are elected by the people for terms of office ranging from one to three years or longer. In these situations, there may or may not be biblically qualifications for those who serve. And there is usually a constant turnover of leadership in the local church. 
All right. Now, often because uh, one, the deacon board decide or that uh, that board decides, well, you know, pastor, that's not the way we want to go. <laughs> if the pastor is one, according to God's heart, that will feed the people uh, according to as God has given, because that pastor should be, they should be uh, uh, given by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, directed and led. But if they are governed by the board, governed and dictated to by the diaconate, then that can become problematic for leading the local fellowship I'll leave that alone, all right? But that was not the plan that the father used as a pattern for his church. All right, let's go to the next one. You got co-equal plurality, right? Or ruled by committee. This form of government sounds good on paper. It is where a team of leaders or elders function as a group with no one designated as the chief or head elder. This form of government does not work in any realm of society. Where is the purported? Where it is purported to be working, one person is usually recognized as the spiritual head. God did not choose any of these forms for his house. I'll say that again. I'll say it again. Show it to me biblically. If you think Otherwise, if you believe otherwise, if you know otherwise, God did not choose any of these forms for his house. Now, you might choose it for your organization. You may choose it for your denomination. You may choose it for your affiliation. That's your organization. That's your creation. That's your thing that you're governing. But when it comes down to the church of the living God, when it comes down to the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood, when it comes down to the Lord Jesus Christ, his body, his ecclesia, his called out one, his assembly, he is the one that rules and dictates. He is the one that sets the pattern. Moses didn't set the pattern for the children of Israel. No, God gave Moses a pattern in which he was to follow and to see that he made it according to the pattern that God showed him. And even though the, there were those who were gifted and talented and skilled, they had to fabricate it, make it. Pull it together. Even when Jethro uh, uh, and, uh, shared with Moses, listen, you're governing, you're dealing with all the ways of the people by yourself. This is not wise. You're going to wear yourself out and the people. You're going to kill yourself and the people. And he said, listen, if this wisdom that I'm giving, this strategy that I'm giving to you uh, uh, is good to the Lord. He said, pray about it. He didn't say, just take it because I'm your father-in-law and do what I say and establish captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over fifties, captains over tens, you know, and, and set certain criteria. No, this was prayerful done and orchestrated and if it had agreed with what the Lord had given. So those are the things that, that, that are understood. Now let's look at God chose plurality of elders with a chief or senior elder as his form of government. All right. Now you can write down these scriptures. We've looked at them, but look at this. Many elders all right, and you'll see this in Acts 14, you'll see this in Acts 20, you'll see this in 1 Timothy 5 and James 5 and 1 Peter 5 as well. All right, take a screenshot, uh, make sure you get this here. This is just a kind of quick review, and then we'll touch on some other things, and then next week, by the grace of the Lord, we'll go a little further. All right, but I feel that we've done so much, we need to go back and kind of touch on these things, save you uh, some, some trouble. All right, so elders of the church are always referred to in the plural. It's never a singular. It's always the elders of the church to the elders of the church and the deacons, right? So it's always a plurality or plural, meaning more than one, all right? Most times it's going to be at least three, all right? Um, it says elders of the church are always referred to in the plural. Actually, in order to have some checks and balances, there needs to be at least three elders, Right. The scripture says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So if there's going to be uh, uh, something dealt with, there needs to be even when it comes down to consecrations. Right. When it comes down to consecrations, those who see Episcopal consecrations, normally you see there's a, a chief celebrant and you see co-consecrators, at least two. 
All right. Uh, when you come to ordaining ministers, when you come to uh, ordaining uh, a diaconate, there is always done not by one, but there is a plurality. There is a senior, but then there are others who are part of that functioning. All right. So. When they had appointed elders, look at it in Acts 14 and 20. When they had appointed elders in every city, in every church rather, and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. All right. Uh, here from Miletus. This is in Acts 20. I shared about this from Miletus. Uh, he sent to Ephesus and called for, look, the elders of the church. The elders of the called out ones, the elders. He wasn't talking about a uh, uh, brick and mortar. He was talking about an assembly, a group, a fellowship, a congregation. He was talking about that ecclesia, the called out ones and the ones who stood as elders or served as elders to guide, to lead, to resolve issues and disputes, to handle matters of concern, right? He says he called the elders. He called for the elders. That's an Acts. In James, it says, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Didn't just say one elder. No, elders. So they work together in tandem. They work together in groups. They're not by themselves. There's accountability. There is covering. There is strength in the number of at least two who walk in agreement. When Jesus sent them out, he sent them out how? Two, right? At two, two. There was in partnership. So there should be at a minimum two but we're, li we're looking for three because if two can't agree, as you see uh, sometimes in the scriptures where Paul, right, and Barnabas, they couldn't agree as it related to John Mark about some things and they had a split as far as ministry. But that's another, uh, that's another matter to deal with. All right. When you look at first Peter five, it says the elders again, plural, the elders who are among you, I exhort. I, who am a fellow, look at this, fellow elder. So even though Peter walked with the Lord, he is a part of the apostles. He also is what? A part of the elders. He says, I'm a fellow elder along with the other elders who are among you. I'm a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partner of the glory that will be revealed. Look at this. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as, look at this term again. we got overseers, right? So here we go. We've got elders. We've got uh, those shepherd, right? We've got serving as, so this is a function. This is not a title. Unfortunately, we've made things that are functions as a title, <laughs> Lord, help us here. We've made some, we made things that are functions in scripture. We've made them as titles that we give. And so we have more people that are looking at titles than looking at function. We look at the hierarchy that's built with titles and not a hierarchy or a servanthood of functioning in the service. Shepherd, that's a service. Overseers, that's a service. Look at that, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Not as being lords. Now that, that, that'll preach right there. Not as being lords. So our service is not to be a despot, is not to lord over as though there is an ownership. How do you own the flock of God. It's the flock of God. It's the sheep of his pasture. It's his fold. It's his, not ours. So he says, um, not as being lords over those entrusted to you. They're entrusted. There's a fiduciary responsibility. There's accountability that must be given to those that are in leadership because that leadership is really serving it's a servant leader's position. We are leaders who serve and we serve as we lead. We don't lord over, we lead. We don't lord over, we feed. We don't lord over because it's not ours. They're not ours, they are his. And he has entrusted us 
with this service. He says, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but look, being examples to the flock. So when you're talking about being uh, those who rule over, he's not talking about ruling in the sense of, listen, you better listen to me. This, no, 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 no. Back that up, back that all the way up because your children don't do that. Your spouse don't do that. You, can, you can't rule your spouse. You can't even hardly rule yourself, pull yourself into order. You got problems with pulling your thoughts together. How are you going to rule over as a Lord over the flock of God? So he says, no, be an example. If, you, if you're going to do, if you're going to tell me to be obedient to the Lord and his word, then that means you too are obedient. If you're going to tell me to be accountable and, 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 um, uh, and all that, then that means you, you ought to have some accountability too. Set an example. Be the example. Amen? Be the example of accountability. That doesn't mean I have to be under you. <laughs> I can come along inside and work with you. If there's issues or matters, you can pull my coattail and say, hey, brother, so-and-so and so-and-so. Can I help you with this? Can I help you with that? But it doesn't mean I have to be under you. He's not called us to be under. He called us to be under him. And Paul said it best. Follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't say be under me. We work together. The body work together. He says, uh, by being examples to the flock and when the chief shepherd, right? When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. All right. Look at this one senior elder, one senior elder. So we're still looking at the fact of God has those who rule in his house and he governs them. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Y'all taking notes. Y'all taking notes. All right. Y'all taking notes. Says, uh, one senior elder, one senior elder. All right. You look at these verses in Acts uh, 12, Acts 15, verses 7, um, 12, 13, 22, and then uh, Philippians. Right. It says James, the brother of our Lord, functioned. James, the brother of our Lord, functioned as the senior elder or senior pastor of the church at Jerusalem. That's how he functioned, as the senior elder or senior pastor of the church at Jerusalem. In addition, when the Lord addressed the local churches in the book of Revelation, he addressed his letter to the set man or angelos, messenger, all right, all right, the set man or the angelos or messenger of the churches, Okay, to the set one, to the leader that was there. Okay, there had to be someone responsible. So he sends the message to the one that's responsible who's who going to sit there. But, it, but that's the senior. He is the senior or the chief amongst others. Not the only one, but one above, one who, who stands out to represent. Okay, so Peter acknowledged James' leadership. In Acts 12, James had the final word at the Jerusalem Council in chapter 15 of Acts. You need to look at that. That's really important. We read that last week. Okay. Uh, Paul acknowledged James' leadership as well. Okay. And again, we're talking about James, not the son of Alphaeus. We're not talking about James and John. We're talking about James, the brother of Jesus Christ. Okay, James, the brother of Jesus Christ is amazing. All right. This has always been God's form of government. God has always used plural leadership with those with one of those leaders placed as head. All right. He's always used plural pluralistic leadership. And one day we're going to deal with that pluralistic leadership. All right. But uh, uh, the the plural leadership with one of those leaders placed as head. Okay? In the Godhead, look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at what's here in John and then over in 1 Corinthians. It says, for there are three that bear witness in heaven. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that the head of every man 
is Christ. Look at this. The head of every man is Christ. The head, let's get a different color here. The head of the woman is the man. All right. And look at this. And the head of Christ is God. So the one who stands above every man is Christ. The head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. God has an order. He has a pattern. God has an order. He has a pattern. The world will try to disrupt that. Satan will try to disrupt that. Men who want power to themselves will try to disrupt that as though they have no headship, as though they have no, no responsibility or accountability. But again, want you to know, according to 1 Corinthians 11, that the head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. While the three members of the Godhead are equal in person, there is an order. There is, somebody say, there is an order. Come on, come on. There is an order. There is an order of headship. There is an order of headship. In a family where you have a father, a mother, and children, there is a order of headship. Even though husband and wife uh, are, are, are leading together, there is a order of headship there. All right? There's an order of it. The father is the ultimate figure. The father sent the son. The son sent the spirit. The spirit bears witness to the son, and the son bears witness to the father. All right? And then as uh, here, you can see in the family. You see, in the family, all right, there is structure in the family. All right, here we go. Wives, submit to your own husbands. That's important. That's important because you may be in a job setting and you might be in authority or you might be under authority, right, there on the job. But when you come home, there is an order for that woman that is married, there is an order for that woman that is married, according to the scriptures. Now, I don't want y'all to start sending me, you know, messages in my inbox, but I'm giving you the scripture. This is not my own thinking. I know that there's a, there's a tendency, especially in this day and time, that there's, a, there's this rise of, you know, independence from, and, but God still has a structure and he still has an order. Whether we uh, agree with it or not, as believers, we still follow what he says, not what the world dictates. He told us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means that we've got to be renewed in our mind according to the word, to be in alignment, to be justified with him. All right. So why submit to your own husbands, to your own, not to the one across the street. Not to the one around the block, not to the one that looks good, not to, no, 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 to your own, to your own, all right? To your own husbands, listen, as to the Lord. So therein is why you do what you do. All oh, because, that, no, 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 I, I do it because the word of God tells me that submit to our own husbands as to to the Lord, as to the Lord, not that he is Lord. Let me be clear here. When it says as to the Lord, that means the same way that you would submit to the Lord Jesus Christ, to his authority, to his headship. That's how you're going to submit to your own husband. But he ain't saved. He, he's, he's, oh my God, I don't understand. So if he's not saved, what does that mean? The word of God didn't change as it relates to you, as it relates to you. I'm saved. He ain't saved. Okay, he ain't saved. That don't mean he can't be saved. And that doesn't mean that God can't give you favor in the matter of that marriage. I'm not talking about somebody who just shacking up, uh, uh, living together, friends with benefits, you know, all that other type of stuff that's outside. Listen, I'm, th this relates. It says wives. That's very specific. Didn't say woman who's living with a man that this such and such and such and such. Because that's going to lead you into some issues and some problems anyway. OK, that's going to lead you to some 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 challenges anyway, no matter how well it looks, no matter how it works for you. But when it comes to what the word says, when it comes to the structure that God has set, 
right? He said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother be joined together with her. So uh, I'm going to give it to you like the word says. I can't sugarcoat it any other way. All right, can't sugarcoat it any other way. So if you if you just living together and you just cohabiting together and all that type of stuff, if you say, listen, this has been a the longest um, engagement and you're just living together because you're engaged and eventually gonna put a ring on it. No, he's not gonna put a ring on it. And and and, and she gonna be as long as she can get, as long as he can get, they're gonna just be just like that. All right. But when you come to Christ and you come to the knowledge of the word, then you want to abide by that. But let's help those who are uh, married and say, man, but he's giving me a fit. He's giving me the devil. He is working me overtime. And I just don't quite understand. There was some advice that Peter gave. There was some advice that Peter gave. And let me let me bring that up here, because somehow y'all say someone say, I can't how I'm going to submit to my own husband as to the Lord. <laughs> this is that's that's one of the hardest things. Seemingly, you know, it takes more strength to submit than it does to resist and stand strong in my you know, independence. You ain't going to tell me what to do and blah, 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 blah. Listen, the word of God. God will protect, God will cover, God will vindicate those who obey his word. No questions about it. If you do it his way, then God will do what he says. But if you do it your way, God is not obligated to do anything on your behalf when you're walking in disobedience to his word. I know it's a little hard. It's tight, but it's right. I got to come down this line, okay? Because listen... As he speaks to the wives, he also speaks to the husband. He speaks to the man. God doesn't, God doesn't leave it out, and, and he don't give one to dictate to the other side. No, 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 no. We remind each other, but the word of God still stands for the believers. Again, I'm not talking to Christians. I'm talking to believers, those who will walk in obedience to the word of God and do it his way so that you reap and receive the blessing of obedience. This is the blessings of obedience, right? So, so here in Ephesians, uh, the word says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Now, if it had said to your own husbands, and, and you're like, well, listen, I don't know how far I'm going to go with such and such. But because it says that those other four words, as to the Lord, that means you got some help. Wife, you got some help. You got some help. If you obey God's word and do it his way, you've got divine help. You're under divine covering. You've got divine providence. Let me tell you, God will fight for you. All right. He'll fight for you. He'll fight for you. How do you know? Let's look over here real quick uh, over in first Peter. First Peter. All right. Let's look at first Peter. I want to help you with this. Here. I want to help you because God will fight for you. He will. And he's going to work some things out for some who have been going through some things and challenged by some things and just feel that, no, no, if you do what he says, sometimes you just duck. You just submit. You just yield and trust God and watch how he works it out. All right. Some of y'all done tuned tune me out and done jumped off. That's all right. No problem. I'm still here. You can catch the replay. <laughs> All right. He says here, Peter, Peter, in, in sharing his wisdom uh, to the to those who were in the diaspora, those who were spread out, those who were here, there and everywhere. This is that circular letter that went around to the believers. All right. Went around to the believers. All right. <laughs> those believers. He says, likewise. So that means he, he had already talked to the men. He already talked to the leaders. He had talked to some others. And now he's saying, likewise, ye wives. Look at this. Be in subjection to your own husbands. Look at this. That if, that if, that if, this is conditional, that if any obey not the word. Talking about that man. <laughs> Talking about that husband. He says that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by, your, by the conversation of the wives. He said, look, you don't have to beat them up. You don't have to come in like, you know, back in the days, you know, the holy women were old. Some of them had some, they, they were holier than thou and he can't touch and he can't, you know, we can't do nothing because I'm in my white. I, I've been sanctified unto the Lord. No, you married to that man. You better give that man what he needs. Yes, indeed. Because if not, he going to go, he going to be pulled elsewhere. 
He says, if any obey not the word, he says, look at this. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husband, subordinate, not as inferior. And I think that's the case. Some, sometimes you think that submission means that you're inferior. No, 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 no. You're not inferior to him. Listen to this here. Let, let, me, let, me, let me help you out. Let me help you out just a little bit. Let me help you out just a little bit. When God made you, he, didn't, he did not make Eve out of anything less than the quality of who Adam was or who Adam is. All right, do you, do you get that? He did not make Eve out of a less quality. He, he didn't make Eve out of soft tissue. He made Eve out of a rib, out of the strength, out of the bone. I mean, he said, look, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So when Adam examined, he said, wait a minute, she made of the same types of qualities, the same type of constitution as I am. God didn't make you inferior. He didn't make you. Listen, when he made you, he made you fitted and outfitted to be able to fit and do any and everything to complement and assist as a helpmate to that husband. Oh, you got to hear me how much God invested in you, the value of the woman, the value of the female in that husband, wife, in that marriage relationship, the value that you bring, the value that you are. You've been, listen, no matter which way he goes or what he does, you're able to to, to complement it or to complete it. You, 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 you're just what's needed to in any and every situation. If you were just made one way, you probably wouldn't be able to fit in this way. But because of the value that you are, the value that you bring. Listen, we read the scripture and we hear it often, right? He that findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Man, God give me so much favor that no matter which way I turn, whatever the need is, my wife is able to come alongside. This ain't my girlfriend now. <laughs> he didn't say my concubine and, and my, he didn't, no, no, he didn't say my live-in mate. But there's a value. So don't devalue yourself and don't think that you're of less value or that you're inferior to. No, no, he made you to be able to fit in every situation, every circumstance, and the type of strength that's needed to support. Not a weaker, meaning that inferior or of less quality talking about of of great value you know how you got that some of you got that china you got that crystal and it's costly you don't just handle that any type of way you don't just deal with that so when he says you know dwell with them uh, as a weaker vessel go dwell with knowledge and you handle them as a as a weaker vessel talking about the value that you have the value that you bring understand the value of that wife and that in her, God has gifted everything that's needed to complement everything that you need to do. In, in any place, in, listen, at any place, they say behind every good man is an equally good, strong, capable, competent woman. If you, if you, if you see a good husband and wife team getting things done, that's, that's the witness of it. So understand, sister, don't, don't, don't you dare have a, a low self-esteem and feel devalued and, and oh, I'm equal then. And you don't have to prove yourself to be. You are already. God already qualified you. He already proved you to be when he made you the woman that you are. He made you the woman that you are. And inside of you is everything that's needed to complement, not to compete, but to complete Hear that clearly, sisters. Not there to compete with the man to say, oh, I'm better and I can do just what he does. Yeah, God made you so that you can complete. But he didn't make you to compete. This is not a competition of the sexes to see who is. Is the male better than the female? Is the female better than the male? No, 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 no. We talk about gender equality and talk about this and talk about that. God made you how he's made you and gifted you with everything that you needed to do everything that's required in your life. So let's go back to that scripture and look at it again in the Amplified. 
In the same way, you wives, be submissive. The strength that it takes to be submissive, the strength that it takes to be, to, to be under, to bear up under, to yield to. It takes greater strength, told you. It takes greater strength to be submitted to, the greater flexibility, just like those palm trees, just like the palm trees, just like those trees that when the wind come, if they stayed rigid in the wind, in the storm, they would break. But they know how to give, they know how to bend, they know how to lean, and then they come right back up. And that's you, woman. That's you. That's you, child of God. That's you, beloved sister. That's you understanding that God has gifted you with the strength to be able to bend and not break. There's some who thought they would break under the pressure, break under the load, break under the responsibility, break under the embarrassment, break under the breakup, break under the abuse, break. No, 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 no. God knows all about the struggle, the challenge, the situation, the circumstance, and he has already gifted you with everything if you will obey his word and trust him, even without the word, that husband will be impacted. So he says here, in the same way you wives, be submissive to your own husband, subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God, and so part Nuring, my God, with them, so that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives of their wives. Listen, the power of a woman, the power of a wife, not just of a woman, because, yes, there, there is that power in a woman. There is that ability that, that's been given, God-given. But there's something about when it's been combined in the, the marriage uh, with God as the center that you obey his word. My God. My God. My God. We've seen nations that have been turned upside down, inside out, when a woman abused, misused, manipulated with her power. You see that with Jezebel. And, and Ahab. But just think, conversely, when you see a woman use her strength that God has given her to build nations, and if there's anything that we know about people of color, if there's anything we know about our communities, if there's anything that's been a testimony and a testament to our, our foreparents, our foremothers, is that they have built nations. They have, they have, they have, they have breastfed nations. They have supported from the cradle nations. This United Nation, this uh, United States of America was built, birthed, nurtured on the paps of black women. I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to leave that right there. But you look back at it and you see nation building still, the strength of you, my sisters, a God-given strength that could be used for good or evil. And even when evil treated, still did good. And look, look what has happened. There have been nations built because of the strength that God has put into you. So don't ever think you're inferior. Because even from times of slavery, was still building, still nurturing, still developing, still using the strength that God has given, even in slavery, even in, whether in the field or in the house. Come on, come on, sisters, where y'all at? So when God says, in the same way you wives, be submissive to your own husband, he's not taking anything away from you. He's telling you that if you obey what he says, God has a way of dealing with that, that man, that husband, who may not obey his word. But while he watch, look at, let, let's go a little further. He said, listen, when they see your modest and respectful behavior, you know what really, what really captivates the heart of that man, that husband especially, but of a man, is to be respected to be respected, to be honored, to be appreciated. I know you look for the love and you look for the security, but there's something that that man needs. That if you do it, like God says, 
you don't have to you don't have to quote to him the scriptures. Just live the life. He he may not be doing all he need to do, but if you live the life, and you help build him, and not batter him. And I don't mean to treat him like a boy, or treat him like your son and baby him. No 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 no. Build up his self esteem, his self worth. Some will say, stroke the ego. Appreciate what little is done until more can be done, until better can be done. No matter what state, what level it is, appreciate it. Honor them. Respect them. And, and I'll tell you, one of the hardest ones to respect, <laughs> and you'll see this example here, when, 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 when you look at Sarah calling Moses, not Moses, calling Abram, Lord, respecting his leadership, respecting the decision. Well, it may not be the best decision. Even after, after the conversation, it's like, well, I'm not certain that that's the best decision. But then you go and you pray. Lord, I'm, I'm going to trust, provide the best advice, provide the best counsel, deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but trust the Lord. Trust the Lord at the end of the day. Trust the Lord. And watch how the Lord turns his heart, turns his mind. That's why he says, without the word, you don't have to say, well, the Bible said, no, 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 no. The Bible told you. What did the Lord say to you? You're the believer. <laughs> you are the believer. There is power in obeying the word of God. It says that when they see your modest and respectful behavior together with your devotion and appreciation, love your husband, encourage him, and enjoy him as a blessing from God. But you don't understand. He's like a something out of somewhere else. <laughs> you do what God said and you watch how he does, how he handles it. Your adornment must not be merely external. Don't just dress it up and, you know, weave it out and, you know, pluck them out and, and laser them in and, you know, all the stuff that's done. That, that's nice. That's nice. But what, what good is it if you, if you look hot, but you're a hot mess? <laughs> what happens when, when all the outside looks good, you can take it off and put it on. That's okay. But what happens if you put all that on the outside, but on the inside, you still got bad attitude, got a nasty disposition, you know, ungrateful, just blah, 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 mouthy, blah, 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 blah. You know, what, what happens with that? He says, your adornment must not be merely external. That don't mean don't look good. Dress it up, put on the, spray the good cologne, and just don't be around the house, you know, all toe up, toe down, and then you get ready to go out, and then you dress it all up, and, and he got to see you tore down, and then you dress up to go out. Hello? Let him see that sexy. Let him see that look good. Let him see that wonderful thing. Don't give it to everybody else to look at. Be eye candy all over the place, and then in the house, you're a horror. <laughs> There's horror in these rooms. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it should be that you, you, you dress it up. You pick it up if necessary. You prop it up. You exercise it. You do something. Don't just let it just lay all types of ways. No, 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 no. If you can fix it up, fix it up. Dress it up. Lift it up. Pick it up. You know, do a little something, something. Anyway, your adornment must not be merely external, with interweaving and elaborate knotting of the hair and wearing gold jewelry or being superficially preoccupied with dressing in expensive clothes. This is all in the Amplified. You can read it in the King James. It may not be as, as like this. But let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart. The inner person of the heart. Let it be, a, have a beautiful mind. You know, there was this, uh, this picture some years ago that I watched um, that, that talked about a beautiful mind. A beautiful mind. Let it, let it be the beauty of the inner person, that inner heart. Because, you know, what's in you is going to come out. What's in your heart, what's in your mind, that's going to come out your mouth. It's going to come out in your behavior. But, it, but if, you, if you're beautiful on the inside, no matter how, how the outside look, even if, the, even if the outside, even if the outside may not be attractive or as attractive as others might think it should be, but if you're beautiful in character, beautiful in heart, beautiful in mind, if, you, if, you, if you're submissive, if you know how to work what God has given you, you might be not the best looking that others would say, but the beauty, that inner beauty, somehow does something to that outward that makes it, whew, hey, all they see is that beauty. 
So he said, let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceable spirit. Lord, just let me have peace in my own domain. Let me have peace at home when I come. I deal with all the hell out there and deal with all the drama outside and all the things on the job and all the things that they say. But when I come home, let me come home and find that there's some peace in my borders. Don't, don't let me come home and I want to be up on the rooftop. Don't, don't, don't let it be that I come home and I want to close my ears and read the newspaper and, and just, you know, just drift off to somewhere. Mm-mm. No, no, no. He says, unfading charm of a gentle and peaceable spirit. Not, not, not up for a fight. Not always fighting. Not always challenging. Not always. You know, not, got, again, it's about completion, not competition. Right? Complimenting, completing, but not competition and competing. One that is calm and self-controlled, not over-anxious, but serene and spiritually mature. Oh, spiritually mature. Because understand, there are times we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And that's why sometimes there's that conflict that happens and that combating that happens because, you know, attitude, attitude, and we want to do that. No, 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 no. Recognize that there's some things that are spiritual and there are other things that need to be worked on on the inside. Lord, make me better. I'm thinking this, that it's him. I'm thinking that it's her. But it's really me that need the inside job. I need the deliverance. I need the healing. I'm carrying some old ways, some old baggage, some situations and circumstances. I don't understand God's structure and government of how we're supposed to do. So I'm thinking because I came up a certain way, not seeing the word of God being modeled or demonstrated. So I think I should rule. I think whatever I say should go. I think I should dominate instead of using my strength to build, to support. Because when you submit, when you uh, subject it, you're supporting some weight of something. You're underneath something holding it up. You're underneath something propping it up. And every now and then, and, and us men won't always say it, we need support. We need propping up. We need, we need that underpinning that comes. We need that blessed assurance of a foundation. We don't need everything to be shaken. We need home to be secure. We need, even if my decisions might look like they're off, still need the stability of knowing that my wife got my back, that my wife is supporting that decision. Not that, okay, you out there on your own, nigga, and how you doing, whatever. Listen. Right? No, no, not that. No, no. Help me to make better decisions. And if that decision, well, okay, man, it worked out that way, Donald. So maybe next time we could do such and such and such. But if I got that support, even though it was a bad decision, you come next time with something better, I'm inclined to pay attention, listen, and maybe follow it. Maybe do it. So you know what, Lisa? You're right, baby. Let, let's try it that way because this didn't work out too well. It will work together. There, there's something about it now. All right, I know I'm, I'm, I'm meddling with some people. That's all right. It's for our good. Which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husband, listen, and adapting themselves to them. Listen, Donald is not like Bill. Donald is not like John. Donald is not like Pete. Donald is not like Isaac. Donald is not like Jamal. Listen, you've got to adapt to who God has, who you've agreed to be connected to. I'm going to say who God is connected to. No, who you agreed to be connected to. Because when a man finds a wife, when he comes, he finds you. You say yes. So that means you're willing to do what? Adapt. Adaptability. I'm going to adapt to. Don't come in there talking about, no, I, I, this is how I've always been. This is how it's going to be. Mm. Listen, there's a compromise. There's a working out here. It ain't going to be all this way. It ain't all going to be that way. But if you know how to adapt, Lord, help me to adapt to. Help me, help me, help me. Anybody got to help me, Lord, in their, their heart? Help me. Help me be the help me. Help me be the husband. Help me be the wife. Help me in this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to mess it up, jack it up. There's so much more at stake. You got children. That's a whole lot at stake. That's a whole other generation that's going to be impacted by the relationship, by that marriage, by how the house is governed. Understand how the house is going to be governed. All right. I didn't mean to go this far, but let me give this here and then get out of your way. It says, adapting themselves to them, 
just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, following him and having regard for him as head of their house, calling him Lord. And you have become the daughters, her daughters, if you do what is right without being frightened. Don't be frightened. Don't be fearful. That is being respectful towards your husband, but not giving in to intimidation, nor allowing yourself to be led into sin, nor to be harmed. Ah, because that, that becomes the other thing, right? What if he's abusive? Beat me day and night and this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. Mm, we're, not, we're not going with the abuse. We're not going with physical abuse. We're not going with verbal abuse. We're not going with emotional abuse. We're not going with psychological abuse. We're not going, no, none of those abuses. No, if you want to keep me as who you say that you love, please don't abuse me. Please don't misuse me. Please don't do that. Amen? In the same way, look at this. In the same way you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact. Be tactful, brothers. Don't be disrespectful. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Be tactful. Know how to speak. Know when to speak. Know what to say and how to say. Because you can say it a certain way. Don't mean you need to say it that way. Think before you speak. Think because it's going to come back to you. Think because if you hurt and break that which God has given you, then how do you expect there's going to be the respect? How do you think there's going to be that, that walking together in the agreement? That's not going to happen. And don't compare one with the other or how you used to be. No, if you weren't used to be, then you should have stayed with used to be. This ain't used to be now. This is something new. This is different. So now you got to come to a better understanding, a different understanding. Don't compare. Put one up next to that. Well, you know, so, no, no. If, if, if Janie is the one you, I'm just using Janie now. Janie, don't get mad with me. I'm just using that as a, a for instance, okay? But if Janie was so good, then you should have stayed with Janie. I'm not Janie. As a matter of fact, I ain't none of them. Right? So, in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. An intelligent, we don't have time to be stupid. Brothers, hello. We don't have time to be stupid. We don't have time to be ignorant. We don't have time to be foolish. We don't have time to be childish. When I became a man, I put away childish things. We gotta listen, because we, we're, we're leaders. They're willing to follow leadership. Even if it's not the best leadership, you got to lead. You got to be able to stand up, make a decision. You got to have a conversation. Got to ask God for wisdom. As with someone physically weaker, since she is a woman, show her honor and respect as your fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers, your request, your conversation with God, your devotion. You want to be a deacon. Talking about you're a minister, you're a pastor, you're a bishop, you're a right reverend, you're an arch nothing if you're not taking care of home, if you're not treating your wife with the type of respect and the type of honor. Everybody else you can respect, you can't respect your own. Get it together at home and leave everything else alone if you can't until you can get it right at home. He says, so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. No power in the pulpit. No power in preaching. No answers to prayers because you're not regarding at home your wife. Your first responsibility Lord, I done stepped all into all types of stuff here now. Gee whizzy, wow. But that's what the word does. It cuts going and coming. It's, it's not just heavy on the woman. It's heavy on the man. It's heavy on that male man. There's a great responsibility, brothers, husbands, fathers, uncles, brothers, son. It's a great responsibility, not one to be taken lightly. If you permit me, we will pick up where we left off by God's grace next week. 
Uh, Father, thank you for this opportunity to share. You've got a government. You've got a pattern. You've got a plan for governing in your house. And help us to understand that it's not according to the systems of this world. It's not according to the rudiments of this world. It's not even according to our organization, denominations, affiliation, and all those things of an organization. But it's according to you. You are the head of the church. Help us to fall in line. Help us to be governed by. Help us to walk in obedience to your will, your way your pattern, your plan. It's not enough just to look good. We don't want just to look good being superficial. On the outside, we look good, but on the inside, full of dead men, bone wheel, white sepulcher. We want to be filled up with your spirit, with your presence. In the name of Jesus. That's why we say, come Holy Spirit, come. Abide within us, dwell with us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And we believe you, Father, that you will do even more than our request, that you will show yourself, that you will magnify yourself, be recognized without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. We thank you for breaking, melting, molding, and filling for your glory and with your glory so that all that we will do will always reflect you. Govern our lives. Order our steps. We commit our way to you. We don't lean to our own understanding. In all of our ways, we acknowledge you. So whether it's at our homes, whether it's on the jobs, in the community, in some place of influence that you've given us, some sphere of influence that you've given us, help us always to represent you in word and in deed. In the name of Jesus, forgive us in the areas and the places that we have failed and we've walked in failings. But we thank you that you've not allowed us to be failures. You deliver us from ourselves and what they say about us. Make us to be who you've ordained us to be before the foundations of the world. I thank you now, that husband, that wife, that child, that family, mm, that son, that daughter, that mother, that father, that friend. We thank you, Lord, that you'll have your way, that you'll be glorified. Your people will be edified. And thank you for sounding an alarm. Mm, in the name of he who died and rose again and lives forevermore and will return one day, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for hanging out with us this evening. Hey, Sister Tracy, God bless you so much, Lady T. I know that you're still hanging out with me. I'm going way past the time. But I'm grateful to the Lord for every opportunity to use it as wisely and to the glory of the Lord and the edifying of his people. And I pray that you've been strengthened encouraged. If you like to be a blessing to the ministry, these are ways that you can share generously with the ministry. Thank you for those who sent salutations for our birth date and sent through Cash App and was a blessing to us. 56 years, the Lord has blessed us. I'm glad to be here and continue to serve and thank God for the getaway. We're able to go down to Florida and see family and friends and spend birthday there, just touching the hearts of those. Thank God for the trip to New York and being able to fellowship there. But thank God for the opportunity to come back home and to find all things well and to join you tonight. Hey, Sister Lily Bird, I see you. I see you. Looking forward to seeing you Tuesday. Thank God they've extended the Tuesday farmer's market there at Dora. And so we're looking forward uh, to seeing uh, you this coming Tuesday. We definitely missed you as we were out of town. And Sister Demetria, it's so good to see you as well, my sister. Bless your life. Thank you so much for joining. Amen. I pray that each one of you have been blessed. Amen. And again, if you would like to share, those are the ways, these are the ways that you can share right here, whether you have Givelify, whether you're using 
a Zelle or Cash app if you want to drop some coins. Amen. You want to drop some coins, right? You can drop some coins. That would be a blessing as well. Again, thank you for those who have shared out of your resources to be a blessing and to say, here, this is just for you. This is to be a, a blessing to you as you travel, as you go, as you do. And we're just grateful for your prayers as well as your support because we are supported also by your prayers and encourage. So we thank the Lord for you and um, those who are able to share in the ministry tonight. And so again, as we're being dismissed from this place, but Father, I pray never ever from your presence that you give your angels charge concerning us to keep us in all of our ways as we rest tonight. Let us be revived and energized from the inside out. We thank you that our sleep will be sweet and should by your will we see tomorrow as is our expectation we thank you that you've got that covered too. So I pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. Listen, be well, be safe, and be blessed. And may the Lord keep you in his care. Look forward to seeing you 7 a.m. in the morning. Remember, you can join us behind closed doors prayer ministry. We're going to be sitting in as the guest host for Mother uh, Gates as we continue to pray for her. A recovery from her eye procedure and then you're able to join us uh, Sunday service at 115 this coming Sunday 115 right here across this place good night Mother Riley thank you so much thank you for your prayers and glad that you're safe as well good night to you you're so welcome thank you for being with us this evening all right beloved rest well and the lord bless you and and do you good and we look forward to seeing you again real soon amen until then the lord bless and keep you good night